Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to World of Warships for our Saturday edition video and doing an upgrade and commander build on the tier 8 Japanese battleship, the Amagi. Um, I've heard it sometimes referred to as a battle cruiser, but uh, definitely going to be referring to it as a battleship um, in today's video. So we're going to look at the armor, we're going to talk about that, but the ship the Amagi is, we're going to look at the modules, upgrades, consumables, and the commander, and hopefully we can do that all within 30 minutes. So first off, what type of battleship are we talking about in the game? You have several different types, uh, three specifically different types of battleships in the game. You have brawling battleships, you have more of the long-range sniper battleships, and then you have mid-range battleships. Um, to me, Amagi falls in that mid-range category. And when I say mid-range, I'm thinking around 12 kilometers, give or take. You know, it could be 12 to 10, 12 to 15. That is what I see as the mid-range fighting. Um, and Amagi really excels at that range uh, with her accuracy. Um, it's not incredible great accuracy, but still really good accuracy, especially with this uh, having the heaviest uh, weight uh, for these 10 410 millimeter guns at her tier. Um, so if you show broadside to Maggie, you will definitely get punished. So let's uh, first look at the armor. One of the big things going on with the Amagi is this 32 millimeter armor. So you'll often be eating a lot of penetrations uh, across the ship. Now the interesting thing is, is she's got this aft end armor plating, um, this 254 millimeter, and then you 32, then 254. That is why in the Magi, and you saw me do it in yesterday's uh, video when I featured the Magi, is I like setting up in this kind of kiting away, um, just because you have this stronger, you have this thicker armor in the aft end of the ship with this uh, armor belt that you don't have in the front. So when you're kind of kiting away at an angle like this, maybe people are thinking, oh, I can, I'll just go for the stern, like that'll be weaker. Um, that's not the case on a Magi. So just note that that is a strength when you're kind of in that more kiting away position. One of the other things that's really interesting about the Amagi is that she kind of has this turtleback armor scheme going on. Um, and that, you, from my understanding, you don't typically find on ships outside of the German battleships. So um, so she can actually brawl decently. Um, she can really eliminate maybe those cruisers, destroyers, and she can, I would say, draw in an engagement on an enemy battleship. You know, of course, you hope they don't have torpedoes or things like that. Um, just because of this armor scheme, to an extent, um, you still get punished if you show too much broadside, and then also her secondaries. Uh, when we're looking at the Citadel, you can see it's um, just, well, maybe it's just waterline. Yeah, it's, it's a waterline Citadel. Um, so, I mean, it, it's nice, and then you, of course, the angled slope, uh, especially when you throw in the this uh, casemate armor. So, she's got several interesting things going on with her armor scheme that's a bit different than most. The other thing is this uh, huge armor on the side here, the torpedo protection. Uh, it's the side plating. I mean, it's just this massive bulge, right? Um, so, she has decent torpedo protection uh, at her tier. Um, I think, I can't remember if Alabama, the tier 8 American premium battleship, has the best, but, um, so that's something to be note of. Um, really quick, I do want to just briefly hit on the secondary armament. Don't have a secondary build, we don't have a secondary flag, which could get us up to 7.3 kilometers, and then a secondary build would be even more. Don't recommend a secondary build with a Mogi, um, but you can, I've heard, within a minute, can get up to 110 shells fired off from one side, secondary shells fired off one side in one minute uh, when I was checking out the WoWs wiki article the other day. Okay, let's hop into modules. So first off, you've got these 4 and 10 millimeter guns that are just devastating. You saw me uh, one shot a Shikaku full health yesterday. It's very satisfying. And then we wrecked a Smolensk. Um, so very good. Reload time of 30 seconds. We have 180 degree turn time right now of 33.5 seconds. Looking at the hull, hull A, you have 59,300. You have slightly weaker AA defense and slightly uh, not as great maneuverability. So when you step up to the Amagi B hull, 
the, you get up to 66,300, which is pretty fair. It's a good standard at tier eight. Um, and a little bit better AA, a little bit better maneuverability. Um, and this is what you want to go for first. If you just got the Amagi and you're seeking recommendations, go for the Hall first, give yourself that additional health pull. Um, and then, you know, a little bit of better AA, a little bit of better maneuverability, but the AA is not fantastic by any means on the Amagi. Um, the next thing you're probably going to want to go for is the gunfire control system. Stock is a bit of a pain, 18.1 kilometers, especially when you're bottom tier. When you do upgrade the gunfire control system, you get up to 19.9, which is much more comfortable. Granted, you still have the, if you equip the spotter aircraft, that really helps make up um, starting off if you're with the first gunfire control system modification one. Next is the propulsion. So you go from 28.1 knots to 30 knots uh, with the upgrade of the engine horsepower. So that's really nice. One of the things that's noted with the Amagi is her speed um, at tier eight um, battleship. So you saw how I was using the concealment and I was using that speed to be able to disengage to heal up. Uh, also demonstrated in yesterday's battle. So this is uh, nice. And then if you had a serum mic flag, you can get up to maybe almost 32 knots roughly, give or take. Upgrade rise. Uh, first off here, we have the main armaments modification one. This reduces the risk of the main battery from becoming incapacitated, negative 20%. Main battery survivability, plus 50%. Main battery repair time, negative 20%. If your main battery should become incapacitated, because um, it's really about the guns here, right, uh, on the Amagi. So we want to do what we can uh, to prevent them from becoming incapacitated. Next, you have the Auxiliary Armaments Modification 1. This is for secondary and AA. Not something you want to take on a Magi. You want to take this. Your AA sucks. I'll get to the AA here shortly, probably. Um, and your secondaries, they're nice, but they're not what the ship is about. It's really about the main guns. Magazine modification. This reduces the risk of your ship's magazine detonating by negative 70%. But if you've been here around long enough, you know I'm going to recommend that you take the Juliet Charlie combat signal when you're in randoms, ranked, clan battles. Completely eliminates the risk of your ship's magazine detonating. You also have spotting aircraft modification one, increases the action time, not worth it. You also have the damage control party modification one, which extends your consumable action time by a plus 40%. Still not worth it in my opinion. Uh, I lean towards the main armaments modification one. For the upgrade slot two, you have two options. You have damage control system modification one, which reduces your risk of catching fire by negative 5%, risk of flooding, negative 3%. And then you have engine room protection. This is something you see much more on cruisers, destroyers, uh, which reduces the risk of your engine or your steering gears from becoming incapacitated by negative 20%. And if they would get incapacitated, the repair time is reduced by negative 20%. Okay, this, I recommend this. I mean, to me it's crazy in that first battle I showed you yesterday, how often I was getting set on fire. Granted, we were dealing with some HE spammy ships on that flank, um, but I was getting constant set on fire, I mean, in this sense, I'm like, yeah, anything that could have helped reduce that chance, I would take it. Hence being the uh, damage control system modification one. It's really the clear winner here. For slot three, you have a few options. You have main battery modification two. This improves your main battery traverse speed by plus 15%. We just talked about right now, 180 degree turn time of 33.5 seconds, which isn't bad. We could increase that a little bit if by taking the main battery modification too. Um, it would probably be my second recommendation uh, for the third slot. Um, I'll tell you why I take aiming systems modification one here in a moment. Secondary battery modification one, um, secondary battery firing range plus 20%, maximum secondary battery shell dispersion minus 20%. Maybe at some point in my future career in World of Warships, I might try out a secondary build of Magi just for the laughs and the lulls. Um, I don't really want to respect a command, Japanese commander just for a secondary brawling uh, battleship, but it's something I'd be curious just to try out um, and see where you get at uh, with the secondary secondaries on the Amagi. Um, when you're looking at the artillery, you have these 127 millimeter guns, and then you have these 140 millimeter guns. These are these guys that line the ship uh, down along the side, uh, both sides. So, you know, these have a reload time of eight seconds. The 127 millimeters have a reload time of six seconds. So 
Um, granted, you know, we could get that reload time down even more, but it's something I'd be interested to try out. If you've tried it out, let me know in the comments. I'm a little bit curious about that. This would probably be my third recommendation. AA guns modification? No. This this would be the last thing you want to take on a Moggy. A just terrible AA, and I'll explain more right here in a minute. I have taken the aiming systems modification one. The big bonus here is the main battery shell dispersion. We reduce it by negative 7%, so that means we're getting even tighter uh, maximum of horizontal dispersion and maximum vertical dispersion. So we're tightening the shell dispersion, so it means we're having more accurate salvos. And again, with these 410 millimeter guns, amazing things can happen, as you saw in yesterday's video. And we get a little bit of a buff to the secondary battery firing range and the maximum secondary battery shell dispersion. So this first is what I would recommend for that accuracy. Um, main battery traverse speed is what I would recommend second. Um, I tend to not be such a big stickler about the main battery modification too for myself as a player because I'm always being mindful of the position my turrets are, uh, are looking. So I use a lot of free look by clicking the right mouse key, right mouse button. When looking around, if I know I'm gonna change positions with my ship and I need to get the turrets turned, I try to work on doing that in advance. Um, so the accuracy is what I'd recommend. For the fourth slot, I would recommend damage control system modification two. Your fire execution time is reduced by negative 15%. Your flooding recovery time, negative 15%. So you're putting out fires quicker, you're putting out floods quicker, you're recovering from them. Um, and that's very helpful, especially if your damage control party is down uh, because you're increasing your survivability, you're increasing your tankiness somewhat, so to speak. Propulsion modification one, this is something you see more on cruisers or shores. There could be a few exceptions with some battleships here, but those are the ones that typically have the uh, engine boost. So maybe not even needed for them. Yeah, steering gears modification one. When we're looking at the maneuverability of the Amagi at 17.3 seconds, um, there's a few battleships at tier eight that actually have a bit better rudder shift time. Um, 17.3 seconds isn't terrible, but maybe in my mind right now, uh, it leans to, towards more of the negative side of the spectrum. Airstrike modification, this is for basically submarines with the uh, airstrike, depth charge airstrike. Um, you don't always get submarines in games, so this is a, a waste in my mind. Um, this would be the number one winner I would go for. If you don't care about the damage control system, then steering gears modification would probably be my second choice here. The fifth slot, we have a few options. We have torpedo lookout system. Uh, this is something I would only really recommend if on a battleship if you had hydroacoustic search to extend your torpedo acquisition range. Um, otherwise, I don't recommend it here on the Amagi. What I do recommend is the concealment system modification one. I already have a camouflage mounted right now. Um, so we'll check out the concealment here in just a moment. But ship's detectability range reduced by negative 10%. Squadron detectability range reduced by negative 10% and dispersion of shells fired by enemies attacking your ship plus 5%. So that means it's not it's worse dispersion for the enemy attacking your ship because of taking the concealment system modification one. So that gets us down to this 13.6 uh, kilometer by sea, 8.9 by air, and zero to 8.9 by depths. So basically by submarines. So again, in yesterday's video, you saw me demonstrating the concealment. I think there's a Hindenburg that was like 13.7, and with our speed, we was able to open up the distance a little bit because um, the Hindenburg was using his rudder and he was kind of not sailing in a straight line at me. Um, so it helped us to stay alive even longer, get a little bit more damage in before we um, perished in that terrible first match. <laughs> uh, so this is what I recommend because um, it also helps equip you move around in the map, get a good position, catch an enemy off guard, and they they forget about you like the Smolensk kind of was like, uh, well, it wasn't so much a Smolensk, but the linen, we were really caught off guard um, and slapping him for a good uh, value. You also have ship consumables modification one. This extends the action time of your consumables by plus 10%. I don't recommend this one either for our Magi. Consumable system modification one is the clear winner. 
Um, armament, you got the HE, you got the armor piercing, you've got the depth charge airstrike, 10 kilometers, which is nice. In terms of the consumables, you have a standard damage control party with the commander build I have right now with Yamamoto Isoroku, which I'll talk about how uh, him in a moment and how you obtain him. Um, our consumable action time is instead of 10 seconds, it's 11 seconds with the, one of the uh, skills we've taken. And our reload time is actually shortened um, for getting the skill back up. So instead of it being 80 seconds, it's 77.6 seconds. For the repair party, ships consumables, uh, HP per second is plus 381, consumable action time, 30.8 seconds, reload time, 77.6 seconds, number of consumables, five. Okay, the HP per second, note that it is, did I say 381? 331, I don't remember what I said now. But we can extend that by taking the India Delta combat signal, uh, which gives us uh, the ability to heal back even more damage. So we go from 331 to 397. So I definitely recommend taking that combat signal and randoms ranked clan battles. For the spotting aircraft or fighter, I haven't experimented with fighter yet. Um, I really enjoy having the spotting aircraft, which is definitely needed. Um, I would argue much more because of that range, especially with the first stock module 18.1 and then you get to 19.9 with uh this one so it, it enables you to reach out and maybe hit that target otherwise um you wouldn't be able to hit especially when your bottoms here um and facing tier 10s that really like playing the range um per se like thunders conquerors yamatos that type of thing which uh is a bit of a pain for magi to deal with so being able to have more of that range is nice, or maybe you need to see over an island and slap a cruiser. You could also take fighter. Um, this is where I'm going to talk about the AA briefly on the Amagi. The AA on Amagi is poor. Um, it's not that good. And there's a specific reason why that makes it poor versus maybe other tier 8 battleships. You could take fighter, um, if, but it's not. Fighter will never prevent a first strike from any carrier, okay? Action radius, three kilometers. You have Russian ships, uh, carriers that can drop you outside of three kilometers, right? And your fighter doesn't do anything. Um, so it's really hard to argue taking the fighter um, when, to me, with a Magi, especially, you get so much more value out of the spotting aircraft. Okay, so let's talk about the AA real quick before we talk about the commander. So this gives you the setup of the AA guns uh, that we have here. Your continuous damage is 190, but if you look to see, we look at damage by short range AA guns, 305, damage by long range AA guns, uh, 105. Where's the medium range AA? Amagi doesn't have medium range AA guns. Uh, so she's either fighting at the short range of 2.5 kilometers or at the firing at the long range of 5.8 kilometers. Um, so that is really a struggle. I have been, I was, was tortured uh, a couple days ago by a Shikaku, uh, and I couldn't stop him from doing multiple strikes on me, and we're same tier, right? Um, so the AA is just not good, and especially not having the medium range AA is not great in my opinion either. Um, you do get 1,470 damage by shell explosions if the carrier player um, wanders into your flak in range of 5.8. Otherwise, AA is poor on a Magi. Okay, so I have Yamamoto Isuroku on my Japanese battleships. I've been running him up uh, since Fuso, and we've had some really fun games already with Yamamoto Isuroku and acti activating several of his talents. So let me talk about how do you obtain Yamamoto Isoroku if you are a newer player. Um, you want to do that port, by going to campaigns. And there's this campaign called Yamamoto Isoroku. Um, and upon completing uh, the fifth, the final task, you'll receive a 15 point Yamamoto Isoroku. You get 2,000 credits, 50,000 late committer XP. Um, talking about his talents, and you get a Yamamoto Isoroku container. Um, so I worked up to get him. I didn't want to go up the IJN battleship line until I had Yamamoto Isoroku, 
And now that I have him, um, I've been working towards getting to the Yamato, which I'm hoping to get in June next month um, by the latest. Um, definitely do not want to push him off till July. So what makes Yamamoto Isuroku so good? Okay, let's talk about his talents and I'll talk about his enhanced skills. First off, you have the second wind talent. I have activated this talent three or five. I know I've done it at least three times, maybe five times. Um, this is, a, you activate this talent by getting a Kraken Unleashed, okay? So your HP per second recovered uh, for two minutes, mind you, 120 seconds, is plus 0.4%. So you can heal back a lot of damage. Um, if you're a destroyer, a quarter health, I mean, you're almost three quarters health um, with this talent activated. Um, you get a lot of repair uh, health pull back. Um, if you're a carrier, squadron preparation time, negative 16%. Your main battery reload time, negative 34%. So um, maybe at the end of this, I'll clip uh, Fuso, and you can see me get activate second wind a couple times. Um, <laughs> I think it was maybe one night. I got three Kraken Unleashes out of five or six battles with Fuso. It was hysterical. Um, and I only really got to use that main battery reload time once. And then if you were a destroyer with torpedo tube reload time, uh, 16% or cruiser or an IGN battleship uh, that has torpedoes. Uh, not common in World of Warships. So that is the power of the second wind talent. The other one, which I activated yesterday, but I didn't show you in that clip during that second battle when we were talked here, is the emergency reserve talent. So I killed that Zaiten. I got the first kill on my team. And so what this does is, is it gives you, um, it basically means first blood achievement, right? But you get additional charge for all your consumables mounted on the ship. So we got an additional repair party. We got additional spotting aircraft. So I got, I went up from five repair parties to six repair parties. Um, so that was actually uh, quite funny. And then you can activate, you know, these personalizations. When you first get Yamamoto Isuroku, these talents will, or not talents, these personalizations will not be activated. So you have to click on them for them to show. Uh, his enhanced skills. Uh, he has the enhanced skill of the preventive maintenance. Uh, the risk of modules becoming incapacitated, negative 45%. Otherwise, it would be negative 30% is the standard. The other one is the grease to gears. Main battery traverse speed plus 25% the standard would be plus 20%. So that helps us get that 33 second, 180 degree turn time with having this enhanced skill. Otherwise, without it, you're probably looking around, I'm guessing 35 seconds. And as you get up to Yama um, the Yamato, your 180 degree turn time is even worse. So you really want um, to be able to have uh, grease the gears. If you're building Yama Yamamoto Isoroku up towards uh, Yamato or you're using a different commander, you really want that. So for first point, I recommend the Emergency Repair Specialist. Uh, reload time of the Damage Control Party, negative 3%. Repair Party Consumable Reload Time, negative 3%. So that was that little shave. Instead of 80 seconds, you saw 77.6 seconds, I think it was. For a third point commander, I'd recommend Grease the Gears. Um, it's really helpful with these battleships, especially with these 4 and 10 millimeter guns, when you're going to get them on target um, to get your salvo off. For a six point commander, I'd recommend taking the Adrenaline Rush. Uh, enhances the ship parameters for, for each 1% of HP lost. Your main battery reload time would be reduced, um, secondary battery reload time reduced, and your continuous AA damage goes up. Not that that really means anything with the Amagi. Um, after this, uh, see six points for a 10 point, I'd probably recommend going ahead and picking up Fire Prevention Expert. This does two things. One, it reduces the risk of catching fire. And secondly, the maximum number of fires on a ship is reduced to three. Okay, risk of catching fire, negative 10%. Maximum number of fires reduced by negative one. And really briefly, if you're new and you don't quite understand what fire prevention expert does, uh, let me show you. Okay, so it reduces catch, risk of catching fire, negative 10%. The other thing is reduces the number of fires. So right now, um, on any ship, you could get four fires on. Um, one on the bow, one on the stern, one on the rear part of superstructure, one on the forward part of superstructure. What fire prevention does is it takes these two fires and makes it only one fire. A lot of HE spamming cruisers, destroyers, battleships, 
they're focusing really on your superstructure. It's more, they're more likely to hit it, more likely to cause you damage. Um, and so instead of having two fires burning here, taking a lot of your health away, um, it's nice to only have one. Again, in yesterday's video, you saw that I, I was getting lit on fire so many times, it was ridiculous. And we even had three fires set on us. So if we didn't have fire prevention, I'm sure it would have been four fires. <laughs> um, so having fire prevention is really important. Um, and even reducing the risk of catching fire, which to me is so crazy, it seemed like every first salvo I was just getting lit um, by those enemy destroyers and cruisers. So um, you wanna have the fire prevention expert, just because when you get to the high tiers of tier eight, nine, 10 super ships, um, the HE meta increases more. Um, ships get more, their artillery, HE shells, have a greater chance of causing fires. Then for a 14 point commander, I'd recommend taking Concealment Experts. Okay, this is what gets us down to that 13.6 with the Camouflage, with the fifth slot upgrade of Concealment. Um, and if you unlock Yamamoto Isuroku, you start off with 15 points. So you could do this build right off the get-go, okay? Then from 14 point to 18 point, you wanna take the Emergency Repair Expert. The action time of the Damage Control Party is increased by plus 10%. So that instead of it being 10 seconds, you saw that it's 11 seconds. Um, you'd get additional charge, but you have unlimited damage control parties on the IJN battleship line on the Amagi. Then repair party consumable action time is increased by plus 10%. Um, so you saw that instead of it being, uh, shoot, I think it's 20, yeah, 28 seconds. It's ex uh, action time is increased to 30.8 seconds. Um, so we're even able to get a little bit more health back, really nice, and then you get an additional heal. So instead of having four repair parties, you have five. Um, and I have had a game or two, I think I've actually burned through at least four heals, if not five repair parties. Um, so to me, it's just really good. Um, when you're this mid-range to sometimes longer range to sometimes closer range, uh, closer than the mid-range, it's nice to have that utility and survivability with these repair parties um, and having a little bit of additional flexibility with the damage control party. Because really, you're trying to, you want to extend your life uh, and the impact you have in the game um, to make some really maybe key decision moments in the battle, okay? So that leaves us with three points. This is an 18-point commander. For a 21-point commander, I'm going to recommend basics of survivability. Module restoration time, negative 15%. That's if something gets incapacitated, module will uh, be repaired that much quicker. Fire extinguishing time, negative 15%. Flooding recovery time, negative 15%. So that means, for example, in yesterday's video where I kept getting lit on fire, I was really going through a lot of my repair parties. I was had to keep using the damage control party. Um, when I'm not able to use the damage control party, um, Having this skill would be very helpful because it's putting out the fires quicker and it's putting out the floods quicker. Uh, in addition, maybe I even get more use out of my repair parties because um, I'm not taking as much damage with this skill as an example. Uh, so to me, this is um, an ideal 21 point build Amagi. Um, and that is why I've kind of connected the basics of survivability with the emergency repair specialist, okay? So that's what I would recommend uh, for a 21 point build commander on the Amagi. Um, I'm not really gonna go into any other possible recommendations. Um, if you have questions, let me know. Um, I don't wanna just take up your time in talking about other possibilities. Uh, to me, this is really golden. You're gonna find a lot of players uh, run this build, um, even on the Yamato. Um, which this is the build I would run on Yamato, even though I haven't played the ship um, here on my main uh, NA server. Um, other differences sometimes you see is instead of the emergency repair specialist, you see people take advantage of the preventative maintenance skill. Um, with which it being enhanced instead of being negative 30%, being at negative 45% is nice. Really, might, that might be the only thing I would switch is just those two. Otherwise, I'd run this. If you have questions about some of these other skills, let me know in the comments. I'll give you my thoughts. But really, to me, this is the gold standard, I would say, for the Amagi.
So I think it's going to wrap our video up. So I appreciate you uh, being here, checking out the video, seeing what's going on. I really appreciate your support of the channel. Uh, I'm really determined. We're almost hitting 850 subscribers. I'm really determined for us to hit 1,000 subscribers this summer. So if you're not subscribed, you appreciate me doing these upgrade commander build videos or any of the other content I do, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel and support. Uh, when we hit 1,000 subscribers, I'm gonna do um, a giveaway. Um, probably have some sort of community uh, play uh, playing together, do something maybe on the public test server. If I can figure out maybe to do a stream uh, on Twitch or YouTube, I'll stream uh, in celebration. Uh, we can have a special Q&A and you can even include Mrs. Flimsy in on it, uh, that type of thing. So please consider subscribing uh, as we try to reach 1,000 subscribers this summer. So if you liked today's video, give a thumbs up. If you did not, give a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you ever subscribed, thanks so much. I really appreciate it, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.